This is the brand new Bamboo Lab P2S and they have finally fixed one of the biggest issues that I've had with their 3D printers. And no, I'm not talking about the five inch touchscreen. You can now print with the full advertised 256 cubed build volume of this 3D printer without doing any kind of wonky workarounds or foregoing your AMS. This has been a major gripe of mine since the very first iteration of their Core XY 3D printers with the X1 Carbon into the P1P and into the P1S where you couldn't print with the full advertised 256 cube build volume of the 3D printer without printing some kind of little printable mod. And then you couldn't even use your AMS if you wanted to, you were just limited and capped off by that build volume, which was just unfortunate. Now with the P2S, you can go edge to edge and fully load up a cube and get that printed. There are obviously gonna be some other things that we're gonna be highlighting as the core differences between the P2S and the P1P, but one of my major call-outs that I wanna end up discussing is what is this gonna mean for the X1 Carbon? Because this printer is pretty awesome. Also, can we just appreciate how clean that first layer looks? Again, 256, by 256 by one millimeter. You could go the full 256 cubed if you wanted. This was a quick 30 minute print. Other than the very fringe edges, this print did so good. And this is the first time that we're seeing an update to one of Bamboo Lab's core 3D printers coming from the P1S to the P2S and it is a nice upgrade. And the P1S originally was meant to be a more affordable Core XY fully enclosed 3D printer coming from the X1 Carbon that might not have all the bells and whistles and functions that you're gonna find on the X1 Carbon, but it's in a more affordable form factor. Now with the P2S, I'm not even sure the X1 Carbon is relevant anymore. And it honestly feels a lot more like a smaller version of the H2S than an X1 Carbon. And one of the first noticeable things, and honestly, I think the thing that most people are gonna call out about the differences between these two machines is the greatly improved difference with a five inch touchscreen. The same touchscreen that I think is on the X1 Carbon. It's definitely the same one that's on the H2S and the H2D. It is such a massive improvement over this wonky interface here. This was easily one of the things that I least liked about the P1S and the P1P, which is why we saw things like Big Tree Tech coming out with a touchscreen option that you could install for these 3D printers. The other visually noticeable difference between these two machines is they ditched this dark black gray to the more matte gray that we've seen with some of their other 3D printers. And on the inside, you'll immediately notice it is a lot brighter. There are two new light sources on one on the left side and then one on the front side compared to this very mildly lit interior that we can find on the P1S. And continuing with the exterior of the printer, the outer dimensions, I believe, are almost identical to the P1S. Uh, the combo unit is going to come with the AMS2 Pro, which is nice. That allows you to do heating. Uh, this does not allow you to do heating while you're actively printing. I, I still don't understand that. That's a whole nother discussion. Uh, on the sides, they have handles now, which makes this so much easier to lift and maneuver around. One of the really cool thing about this is on the right side is a vented chamber. It might be on the left as well, but this is going to bring in cool air depending on if you're printing with PLA or something like that so you can leave the door closed. It doesn't have that fancy vented top like we see on the H2S and the H2D. And then coming around to the back side here, we have the updated hub that allows you to install multiple AMS units or if you wanted to have the side mounted spool running as well as the AMS2 Pro, you can have that all set up in one go. I should mention it does have the same poop shoot location on the very back. So any kind of of poop shoot that you might have had for your P1S or X1 Carbon or P1P will just be able to transition nicely over to this here. There are still issues with piling up of poop that I'll show off here with some of my prints. But I did want to mention that again, that side mounted spool holder has moved from the right side and is now on the left side. And again, it has a built in guide. So this is a, a nicer side mounted spool holder, great for using with TPU or anything like that, which allows you to feed it over directly to the top of the 3D printer. And then on the inside, you still have the same you know, glass door here. It still does not open. It opens just about to the same it easily. Yeah, it's the same. <laughs> it's not gonna open up anything beyond. It's a slightly past 90 degrees. 
But on the inside here, they've ditched the carbon fiber rods, which is nice. There is an updated design here for the print head and shroud here and fan. That's all very nice. It's going to be using the same quick magnetic swappable hot ends that we're finding on the H2D and the H2S. So not the same ones that are on the A1 and the A1 Mini. Just keep that in mind. And then on the inside, they have swapped the fan from the left side to the right side. Why? I'm not entirely sure, but it works just as well. If you wanted to, you could add a secondary fan on the left side here. That's configurable. The build volume is still the same 256 by 256 by 256. And your build plates, if you have build plates from the X1 Carbon or P1P or P1S, those are all swappable and usable here on the new P2S. And then one thing that I am absolutely loving about this printer is on the bottom here, which is notorious for catching all kinds of debris and whatnot from your prints, like here on my P1S, is just, it's filled with little odds and, and bits of just garbage. This has a ramped slope here, so you can easily just brush anything that's down here outside of the 3D printer. The other thing that's really nice is they put little rubber caps here over these little uh, bearing sides here, which were previously uncapped, and I think people have created 3D mods to help plug those up. Also behind the five inch touchscreen is where you're gonna find the USB port for your USB stick, which is not included with the printer. Again, Bamboo Lab, just like with the H2D and the H2S, if you're gonna require this kind of thing for time lapses and storing your print files, Either have built-in storage or include a USB stick. Or better yet, let me know what is the like what are the USB stick options that I should be using. This is an eight gig stick and it's clearly not enough. I can't store time lapses or anything like that on this. And I, I don't understand why. Maybe it's an initial firmware issue with the machines that'll get resolved, but it's nice to have that up there, but I just need more specifics about the USBs that are necessary that are gonna work properly with the machine. The touchscreen is super responsive, just like what we're seeing on the H2D and the H2S, or even the updated X1 Carbon here. The touchscreen also allows you to easily manage any of the filaments that you're running with, or if you wanna work with multiple AMS hubs or like the AMS high temp unit here, you can easily have that plugged in for a fifth color, which is what I used for this print here that we'll be talking about shortly. Another nice upgrade over the P1S is that it includes an active carbon filter, which is gonna be great for any time that you're running with ASA or ABS, which this machine is perfect for running those types of materials on. There's also no active heated chamber in here. However, it will self-regulate using those built-in fans on the side. So if it gets too hot, it'll help cool things down. It also has a greatly improved 1080p camera on the inside for better time lapses and remote monitoring of your 3D prints. And it also supports that AI failure detection. If it detects any kind of failures, it can help alert you to those issues. There's also sensors built into the new extruder, which will help detect if there are any clogs or filament grinding. One other random one that I noticed, let's see if we can get it to pop out here is, there we go. This right here like hides when the print head is moved forward, but then pops out is this little probe type thing. And that's the piece that is the filament cutter that's gonna press the filament cutter. So instead of moving all the way to the front and pressing that, it's just this little thing that pops out and then it can press against. Another call out is that the poop chute is so much more narrow now compared to the previous ones. There's also an updated silicone pad there that it's using, but it's this kind of cool lever system for managing the purge material that's coming out of the machine. Again, I've still had issues with it piling up, but it did pause the print as it detected that filament had purged and piled up in the back there. Now, obviously one of the big features of this 3D printer is the capabilities of doing multicolor 3D prints. So I loaded up this Xenomorph file by Wexter and got to printing. And unfortunately the head started to fail. And this gave me a good opportunity to test out the object cancellation functionality on the 3D printer. That all worked flawlessly. Unfortunately, the heads did not, but the bodies printed properly. So then I threw down with the BQ cryo plate on there. Again, you can use any of your existing build plates that you might have that fit the X1 Carbon, P1P, or P1S, and got back to printing those heads. And even with that super tacky plate, even one of those heads fell. But I ended up getting two out of the three to properly print and not snap when I broke off the supports. 
and the prints as again expected look really good these are super clean and turned out fantastic and could i have printed them faster on the h2d since they're only two colors yeah obviously but they still printed and look really good. Next, I wanted to try printing this modular axe by Miniatures, and I wanted to test out printing with some PETG, so I used some of this Prusament PETG, and I'm loving the color, and unfortunately, again, I ended up running into an issue where one of the prints did not stick to the build plate and broke free. And unfortunately, the AI detection did not recognize that it broke free, but thankfully I did when I checked in on it. And again, used the functionality baked in there so that I could actually cancel that one object and then continue on with the rest of the prints and then ended up reprinting that one part separately. The other odd thing with the PETG is that the infill was kind of not printing entirely correctly for these and I'm not, 100% sure why. The exterior looks fantastic, but the inside, you can almost, it's, it, it sounds like there's salt inside here or something, you know, sand inside the ax where the interior is just kind of scattering around where it didn't fully print properly and is just kind of rattling around. But the exterior details, especially around some of the handle ribbing areas, look fantastic. I then want to try printing with ABS with this fully enclosed Core XY machine. So I loaded up some Polylite ABS, which already had a print profile in place in Bamboo Studio, and got this print from Yo Studios sliced up and printed. And it looks so good. Like it looks ridiculously good. Unfortunately, it uh, was scaled incorrectly to fit my head. So it's just like a, a tad bit too small. One call out that I did want to have is on the top left hand side towards the fan, funny enough, is where there is like, where on the very top, it has some seams where it just did not properly print correctly here on the very top. Why that happened, I honestly have no idea, but it is a very similar issue that I'm gonna bring up here in just a second. But before I do that, a quick rant about the AMS uh, HT here. So this allows you to print with high temp materials like ABS that I was able to plug in and get printed on the side of the P2S and it allows you to dry your filament, which is awesome. Kind of like the AMS2 Pro. Well, I knew the AMS2 Pro, you can't print and dry, but I assumed that you could print and dry with the AMS high temp, but you can't. I, I don't understand why th there's a limitation that you can't dry and print at the same time. I feel like that negates the whole point of having this. If I can't dry with it at the same time that I'm printing, what's the point? I'm hoping at some point there'll be a firmware update that supports that, but as of right now, you can't do that. Also, there's a bug that if you're heating filament with this and the AMS2 Pro at the same time and then try to start a print, you'll get a warning message that you can't heat and print at the same time. So you can cancel the heating, but it only cancels one of the units and then your file never gets sent to the 3D printer and the job never starts, which I found out the hard way, AKA the print never started and uh, I was gone for a few hours. Also super random tidbit here. I really like that they've incorporated that when you open the door, it triggers the screen to kick on just like what we saw on the H2D and the H2S. I also wanted to throw in some 95A TPU. They do recommend not running TPU through any of the inlet ports or anything like that on the backside of the printer. They recommend removing the PTFE tube and going straight over the top from the side into the 3D printer, into the hot end. And that's what I did here with this little webbed stand that I found online that I'm gonna to use to hold my AirPods. And the last thing I wanted to try was a really large multicolor print just to see how well it would do with a large multicolor project, especially since this printer has the updated inlet design on the back that allows you to work with multiple AMS units. So I printed this Owl controller design by Hollow Props using five colors. And this is where I ended up running into the purge material backing up into the chute and causing that clog to occur, but with its built-in sensors or the camera, it ended up catching that and pausing the print. Unfortunately, notifications at the time of me recording this are not sending directly to my phone for whatever reasons from the P2S. They work with all the other Bamboo Lab 3D printers that I have, but the P2S I'm sure will get sorted. 
and this print looks so good. <laughs> this was printed again with five different colors using the AMS2 Pro and the AMS High Temp. And again, just looks ridiculously good here off the P2S. This was printed at a point 2.4 layer height as well. And the one issue that I have with this controller holder is the same issue that I had with the Peacemaker helmet, which is on the left eye, it did not complete that upper ring printing properly, just like we saw on the top of this helmet here. So I'm not entirely sure what the heck is causing that, but again, it was on the left side, same as the fan. So maybe it's something with the fan or just how it's finishing the top layers for those sections of the prints. As far as I can tell, nowhere else on the top of this bird's head do we have those issues other than the round eyeball section. And when it comes to the pricing of the P2S, this is where things get a little crazy for me is because the P2S, just the standalone unit is gonna be $550. The combo unit that includes the AMS2 Pro is gonna be $799. Now keep in mind, those numbers might change due to the tariff situation that's going on right now. But at this point, I like see no reason why you should go for the P1S unless they're gonna be steeply discounting that with the addition of the P2S. And then with the X1 Carbon in mind, there is literally nothing on the X1 Carbon that I would recommend over the P2S. Like, are they planning on getting rid of the X1 Carbon or are they gonna be refreshing the X1 Carbon as well and adding even more features to that? But it really feels like if you're gonna spend the money on an X1 Carbon, you might as well spend what? Uh, like $200 more and get an H2S and get a much bigger machine that has a good bit more capabilities to it. I also had some minor software issues that I'm sure they're gonna get sorted before this is officially released. I'm on a Mac and I couldn't enable time lapses directly from my computer while sending files to the machine. I had to save them on the USB stick and then load them here and then that would enable time lapses. But even then it wouldn't record the time lapses because I think of the storage size on the USB stick, I'm not entirely sure. I ordered a 256 gig USB stick that I use on my H2S and H2D that I'm just waiting to arrive that I'll be replacing this one with. Also, I'm on an iPhone and I was not receiving any notifications from the P2S through the Bamboo Handy app. I am receiving notifications for all of my other Bamboo Lab printers. So I'm assuming this is just something maybe on iOS that's an issue for the P2S that they'll get sorted. This is also a super nitpicky one, but Bamboo Lab is no longer including flush cutters with any of their printers. So if this is your first time buying a 3D printer, you're gonna wanna order some flush cutters to trim your filament or just help trim off supports or anything like that. These are super helpful to have on hand. And one last nitpicky thing is that the provided power cable is laughably short. Also, unlike the H2D, and the H2S, the machine does not come with a spare 0.4 millimeter nozzle. So you wanna make sure to order one of those. It does come with a spare silicone sock, as well as one of the little pads that go in the back there for the filament purging. I'd also really recommend ordering a spare bracket or two that hold the nozzle in place. If you ever get a really bad print clog, that is gonna be the first thing that ends up getting screwed up and that you're gonna to have to have replaced. And let me know in the comments down below what printer you think Bamboo Lab will refresh next. Again, with the addition of the P2S and the H2S, I'm not really sure where the X1 Carbon really fits in the entire lineup of their 3D printers. I also want to say a big thank you to all my Patreon supporters for your continued support, me making videos just like this one here. If you're interested in more information about my Patreon, you'll find links to that down below. But the P2S is another great addition to Bamboo Lab's already impressive lineup of 3D printers. And if you haven't already, consider subscribing. I want to say thanks again for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye now.